Have you ever wondered why Daniel asked for 10 days of time in Daniel 1? Why not 7 or 12 or 20? Why exactly 10? Was that just the first number that came to his mind? Or is there more to it? Hi, welcome to Masterpiece. My name is Chris, and in this video, we are back in the book of Daniel. We haven't been here for a while, actually, but several of you have been asking for more videos on Daniel, so here we are. And this time, we are looking at the very first chapter of the book, and we're going to focus on one particular detail in this chapter, which is the 10 days that are mentioned in verses 12 and 14. Okay, so you remember in Daniel chapter 1, Daniel and his companions, along with other young people from Israel, are taken to Babylon in order to be educated there so they can serve the Babylonian king. So they're supposed to learn the literature and language of the Chaldeans, they receive new names, and the king also determines what they are to eat. But Daniel doesn't want to defile himself and instead asks for vegetables and water for him and his three companions. And according to verse 12, he specifically asks that this food be given them for 10 days. Which of course raises the question, why 10? Now, since we're dealing with a Bible, it's pretty likely that there's more than just one reason. But in this video, I want to share with you one possibility that I find quite intriguing and which I think makes sense in the context of this chapter. So if we go back to the first couple of verses, one of the things we notice is that from the very beginning of the book of Daniel, there's a conflict going on. And it's not just a military one, but actually a spiritual one that strongly revolves around the theme of worship in connection with the temple or sanctuary. We've got Babylon versus Jerusalem. We've got the house or temple of the Babylonian God versus the house of the God of Israel. And we've got part of the vessels of the house of God which are given by God into Nebuchadnezzar's hand and which Nebuchadnezzar then brings to the house of his God or more specifically to the treasury of his God. So from the very beginning of the chapter, we have this temple slash worship theme that of course is not just the theme here in Daniel 1, but actually runs through the entire book. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar brings the temple vessels to the treasury, but the interesting thing is that this is not the only thing that is brought in the chapter, because if we keep reading, we notice that in verse 3, this same word bring occurs again, where the king orders the chief of his officials to bring some of the sons of Israel. So we have vessels that are brought, and we have people that are brought. And the repetition of the word bring associates the people with the vessels. Now, this is a pretty interesting connection, especially since it says in verse 4 that these people who are to be brought are to have no defect or blemish. Because if you do a search on the word blemish, you'll notice that this word is strongly associated with the sanctuary service, in particular with the offerings as well as with the priests, which both were to have no blemish. So again, we have a temple slash sanctuary slash worship connection. And we're not done yet. Because in verse 4, it also says that these people without blemish should serve the king in his palace. Or, as it literally says, they should stand before the king in his palace. So why is that interesting? Well, first, because the word translated as palace can also mean temple. And second, because according to 2 Chronicles 29.11, the priests and Levites were to stand before God in his temple. Which means that if we read Daniel 1 carefully and pick up on the clues the author gives us in the text, it seems that what's really going on here is that these Israelites who are brought to Babylon are actually supposed to become Babylonian priests, so to speak, who can serve the king in his palace slash temple, just like the priests and Levites served the God of Israel in his temple. Now, if that's true, then the Babylonian king would have to be like a god, right? Yeah, and there's even further support for that in verse 5, because what happens there? The king appoints food, which reminds us of exactly. It reminds us of God at the very beginning in the creation account where he gives humans food to eat. And when you take a look at this word appoint and where else it occurs in the Old Testament, you realize that the only other subject of that verb is God, which is quite significant because it means that by appointing food for the Hebrews, Nebuchadnezzar is really taking the place of God. And that in turn means that by partaking of this food which Nebuchadnezzar appointed, the Hebrews would really be Babylonian priests participating in a false cult and worshiping Nebuchadnezzar as God. 
So again, there's the theme of worship. Now notice how Daniel responds to all of this. Instead of eating the food which the king provides, he asks for vegetables and water instead. And the interesting thing about this is that the Hebrew word that's translated as vegetables here is actually related to the Hebrew word for seed and basically means plant food, which again reminds us of creation where God gives humans plants and fruits yielding seed to eat. So what Daniel is actually doing here is he's resisting the Babylonian plan in a very nice and subtle way and at the same time proclaiming his faith in the God of creation. It's like he's saying, I'm not going to worship Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to worship the true God by eating the food he has appointed. Now, once we clearly see this worship and temple slash sanctuary theme in the chapter, the 10 days become really interesting. Because if you look for a period of 10 days in the rest of the Bible, there's actually a very significant one that's associated with the sanctuary, and that is the 10 days between the Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the seventh month and the Day of Atonement on the 10th day of the seventh month. And as you may know, this Day of Atonement was not just an important holiday, but also a day of judgment on which anyone who did not humble himself before God was to be cut off. And the 10 days were a special time of preparation for that judgment day. So what seems to be going on here is that Nebuchadnezzar has set up a time period of three years in which the young people are to be prepared for service to him. And at the end of those three years, they will be examined, or we could say judged by Nebuchadnezzar. But now Daniel asks for a time period of his own, which is much shorter and which reminds of the time of preparation for the Day of Atonement. So by asking for precisely 10 days in this particular context, Daniel is really saying, I want to humble myself before the God of Israel and trust that he will deliver me because this God is my judge. Which is, of course, exactly what Daniel's name means. God is my judge. So is that all we can say about the 10 days? Probably not. So if you have any further insights you want to share, let me know in the comments. And if you want to know why Daniel 1 ends the way it does, then go watch this video next where I talk about the apparently unnecessary last verse in this chapter and why it's exactly in the right place. Enjoy watching that, and we'll see you on the next one. Ciao.